Hi everyone, Yoram here again. I received a question on whether you can use Stream Deck, that's Stream Deck, to not only control OBS, but to actually control uh, something like PowerPoint. And can I do that at the same time? So uh, the answer is yes. The short answer is yes. Uh, Stream Deck is really not a lot more than a programmable keyboard. So just, just think of it as every key here, you can program whatever you want that key to do. Plus you have the added uh, bonus of uh, putting your own logo or your own graphic to tell you what that key is instead of just uh, one letter, uh, especially when keys have special meanings, uh, which is what makes them called hotkeys. You can combine things and I'm going to show you how. The most important thing you need to remember is that some applications, in, other than I'll, I'll put all the gaming applica applications aside, specifically things like OBS have something that's called a plugin. So OBS has a plugin that allows OBS to communicate with Stream Deck or for Stream Deck to communicate with OBS, let's call it below the surface. So it's kind of a direct link as opposed to any other application or most other applications, PowerPoint being one of them, where Stream Deck can only interact with it if this is the active application. As you know, even when you use the keyboard, if the application you're trying to type into is not the active application, it's not the active window, whatever you type on the keyboard just goes somewhere else. Maybe there is another active application where this is actually going into. You know how sometimes you open an application and you see that there were things that, that you don't remember typing. Well, because the, that was the active application when you use the keyboard. Same applies to um, Stream Deck. What I'm gonna show you now is I'm going to show you, I have right now, I have an application, I have PowerPoint. PowerPoint is running, it's in presentation mode. Uh, because I cannot combine showing you going back and forth, uh, showing you between Stream Deck and uh, the uh, main presentation screen, I'm going to show you what the presenter view is like, but it is running, PowerPoint is running, and you will see when it's the active application. So let me switch, and uh, now you can see this is the Stream Deck application. And it reflects exactly what I see on my Stream Deck uh, uh, keyboard uh, right now, the, the little box. And this is the PowerPoint that's currently running. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sacrifice this button for you. So we're gonna delete, we're gonna say yes, and now it's gonna be open. I actually don't have to delete it first. I can just drag something in there. So when you look at the right, you can see there is an OBS capture. There is even the Elgato game capture that I can control directly, even if it's not the active application. Uh, OBS Studio, here are all the buttons. I can do the record, which is what I did here. I can, uh, we're not streaming here. I can choose a source. So this button would choose a source. It can uh, choose a scene, even the mixer audio. I can control these things without OBS being the active application. And, and I like it that way. But when you go down to uh, uh, the Stream Deck and see what other functions are there, the one we're going to focus on right now, <coughs> sorry, is the one called Hotkey. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drive or draw, pull a hotkey in here. Now, what key would that be? So if I want to do a, um, uh, for example, a, a slide forward, go to the next slide, this is kind of something that I put together from different sources. The best source is Microsoft uh, because they obviously know what's available on PowerPoint and what's not. And these are the different buttons that would do or hotkey combinations that would do several things. Now, for example, uh, N or enter or space or right arrow or down arrow would move to the next slide. So let's do that. So let's just call this one next. We're calling the button next. And when I click on this, it's observing what I'm going to press on the keyboard. So I'm going to press the right arrow and look at what happened, it said right. And from this moment, this is next. Now, one other thing that you keep in mind is that I can choose a an icon that I wanna have here instead of just uh, the standard hotkey. I'm going to choose from a file and what you will see is that I actually have a directory where I created different uh, button. So it's just graphic. It's it's a PNG file as, as you can see. So I'm going to take the one that looks like PowerPoint 
and uh, the PowerPoint logo. And now I have the word next. Actually, maybe what I want to do is have next capitalized. And uh, the color is good, but if I did not like the color, I can change the color here. I can change the font size. Let's make it a little bigger. Yeah, I like that. That's that's pretty clear that what we have is next. I can decide if it's going to be top, middle, or bottom. And that's it. So now, if I press it now, nothing is going to happen. The reason nothing is going to happen is because PowerPoint is currently not the active application. How do I know that? If you look around the application, you don't see a colorful border. But if I press on it, you can see that the border bold, that the border became colorful. So now it's red. And now if I press press this button, the next button here, and I'm not going to press it here. I'm going to press it on the box itself. Bam! It goes to the next uh, to the next one. Uh, I'll go with the uh, uh, the mouse. I'm going back. I'm going another one back. I'm going to press this again. Bam! It works. Now, uh, another thing that you can use, uh, this is called a hotkey switch. A hotkey switch is very similar. So I'm going to drag this one and I'm going to choose hotkey switch. Again, it asks me, do I want to replace? I'm going to say yes. The, the difference between a switch is that switch has two possibilities. It's on or it's off. So let's call this one next. And what are we going to assign? I'm going to assign the right button but the next one if i go to the second hotkey i'm going to assign the left button uh so this is what will happen and in fact okay once again uh, let's let's put an image uh we're gonna set it from file again because i'm using powerpoint you know what this time yeah let's do this uh, i'm going to use this as uh, the powerpoint logo i'll bring it there uh, when it's in the other mode, instead of just being a little faded, what I'll do is I'll actually put a gray one that I created. Th these are icons that I created. Now what's going to happen? First of all, let's make PowerPoint the active one. This one goes to the next. The next time I press, it goes back, forward, back, forward, back, because one of them is actually forward and then the next time it switches it doesn't actually activate exactly the same function i'm going to take it one step further do you want me to take it one step further yes you do one step further is we're going to go instead of just a hotkey or a hotkey switch we're going to do a multi-action so again there's a multi-action and multi-action switch so let's do multi-action. I'm going to drag a multi-action. Do you want to replace it? Yes, we do. We want to replace it. What are we going to call it? We're going to call it slide 15. I don't even know what's in slide 15. I think the font is a little too big here. So how about if we make the font a little smaller? How about if we put it in the middle? Once again, I'm going to choose, um, I'm going to choose this font here. And this is going to take us to slide 15, except we haven't defined anything. But what you'll notice is that there was a window that opened here. And in that window, I'm going to drag a sequence. <coughs> I'm sorry, a sequence of things that I want happen when I press this. So we're just going to do hotkeys. So one thing is in PowerPoint, uh, if you press the number of a slide and then enter, it would actually go to that slide. I bet you didn't know that. Well, now you do. So slide 15. So we're going to choose a hotkey and the first hotkey, we're just going to call it one and observing keystrokes. I'm going to hit the keyboard one button. Let's drag another hotkey and the hotkey is going, I'm going to call it five and we're going to observe and I'm going to press five. I'm going to drag another hotkey and this one I'm going to call enter and I'm going to observe and I'm going to hit the enter which they call return. Right now this is what's going to happen. When I press this button it's going to go to slide 15. Well I can press it now nothing is going to happen. Why? Because PowerPoint is not the active window. So let's click on the PowerPoint. It became the active window. Let's see if I'm right and I'm going to press this button. I'm actually going to go up here so you'll see this is what it looks like. 
I'm going to, well, I just got uh, out of window being, uh, PowerPoint being the active window. Now I'm back there, I clicked on it. Let's press this button. Guess what happened? It just took us to slide 15. One last thing I want to show you is just like I have multi-action, I have multi-action switch. And multi-action switch would do the same thing as we did before. So now it's a combination of both things. There are two modes for it. See up here, one and two. So I can decide that in mode one, it's going to take us to, uh, let's say, uh, we're just going to drag hotkey. We're going to call this one one and we're observing one and then another hotkey which we're just gonna say enter so I sent oops I'm sorry I did not press actually type it and we're gonna observe observe enter so essentially if I press this once it's gonna go to slide one what happens the next time I press it how about if we go to slide five let's do slide five so I'm going to drag in here we're going to call it one and uh, we're going to observe. No, I'm sorry. We said five. So let's go back here. I'm going to drag. The first one is going to be five. Click to assign five. Let's drag another one. This is going to be enter. And I'm going to uh, observe and hit enter on the keyboard and so now the first time I press on it it's going to do one and enter the next time it's going to do five and enter so theoretically it should uh, play between those two I, I still need to call it how about if we call it one fifteen okay uh, one and five I'm sorry one and five which means that this will remind me we are even going to make the text larger so it's really, really big. And yes, of course, we're going to put uh, from a file, we're going to choose this icon. And now whenever I press this button, actually, I only chose this for the second one. So I'm still going to call it one and five. And I'm going to choose the same icon. I'm good with the same icon. Uh, of course, I would not know which one is one and which one is five because they, they have both uh, they have the same, well, ex except for the size, I guess, um, which actually indicates that maybe now what I want to do is because this is going to be five, maybe I just want to call it five here. And when I press one, I just want to call it one and also give it a, a larger font as well. So now I know that if I press this, let's make a, a PowerPoint the active window. If I press this, then it's going to take us to slide one. Here's press. It took us to slide one. If I press it again, it should take us to slide five. By the way, you didn't see it here because I didn't show you what the 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 uh, box looks like. But see that it now says five. So if I press on it now, it should take us to slide. Oh, guess what? PowerPoint was not the active window. Now it is. I see the red border around it. It's very hard to see, but there is a red border around the active window. And so now I'm, you can see that this button is going to be one. So I'm going to press it and now it's, it took us to one. Now it shows five. If I press it again, guess what? We're going to sl slide five. Now it shows one. So if I press it again, it's going to do one. Well, Obviously, there are a lot of things that you can do with that, uh, but notice that in no point in time did I actually sacrifice any of the other functionality that I have in this. Uh, so, for example, the camera, the main camera I'm using off and on, everything is still operating here. I did not sacrifice any OBS uh, activity. So. Can you control multiple applications? Yes, you can. You can control OBS with a few buttons. You can control PowerPoint. Just keep in mind, if you want to control PowerPoint or any other application that does not have a direct connection, a plugin to Stream Deck, then you need to make sure that this is the active window, just like you saw here. That's all I have for you for now. Uh, if you have any other questions, just shoot me emails, Facebook, whatever, on YouTube, and uh, let me know that there's something else of interest. And whenever I find, you know, a window of, uh, I want to take a break from what I'm doing, from creating more content, I just shoot those videos. 
Not the highest quality, but hopefully they're uh, helpful enough. Be good, stay healthy, be trusted.